Hi everyone, I'm Justisa and welcome to Dark History of Sweden. Today we will talk about Swedish mass murderers. Before we get into the actual people, let's define it. What is a mass murderer? And what is the difference between them and serial killers that we talked about last week? If you haven't seen that one, I highly recommend that you do. There will be a card up in the corner and at the end of this video as well. According to Wikipedia, mass murder is the act of murdering a number of people, typically simultaneously or over a relatively short period of time, and in close geographic proximity. The United States Congress defines mass killings as the killings of three or more people during an event with no cooling off period between the homicides. A mass murder typically occurs in a single location where one or more people kill several others. A mass murder may be committed by individuals or organizations, whereas a spree killing is committed by one or two individuals. Mass murderers differ from spree killers, who kill at two or more locations with almost no time break between murders and are not defined by the numbers of victims and serial killers who may kill people over long periods of time. The incidence of mass shootings are continuing to increase. So unlike serial killers who kill over a period of time, mass murderers kills many at one time and location. But let's get into the Swedish mass murderers. I have quite a few I want to bring up today. Nils Peter Hogstun was born 25th of November, 1853. At the end of 1870s, he joined the military and became a gunner for Vendest Artillery Regiment. But he soon deserted back home to his mother. That is when he started his criminal career as a thief. December 17, 1885, he had already been to prison three times for stealing. He was known to be a violent and brutish man. It was rumored that Hogstam had already met one of his victims beforehand, and that he was the reason Hogstam had been put to jail. It was quite obvious that this was a revenge murder. He even swore that when he got out of jail, he would get revenge. The night of January 11th, 1886, he exacted his revenge. When he finally got to Glimminge Gård and found Johannes Suneson, he cut his throat. He then moved on and killed his wife, Lovisa Tureson, killing her with an axe. He also killed their grandchild, seven-year-old Clara, while she slept. This wasn't the end of this mass murder. He stabbed and abused their daughter-in-law, Carolina Karlsson. She didn't immediately die and could give a description of Hogstum. After killing these four people, he fled on horse and sled with the things he had stolen from them. He fled to an acquaintance in Svinön, but when the friend's wife understood what he had done, she turned him in to the police. February 2nd, 1886, the trial started, and Hogstum denied that he was the murderer, even if there were evidence and witnesses that connected him to the crime scene. These trials went on until May 1886. He demanded to be released but ultimately, he was found guilty of the murders and was sentenced to death. Hogström was executed on 28th of March, 1887. 23rd of March, 1875, Jan Philip Nordlund was born in Stubosbu. He never really lived an honest life, stealing and forging as he needed. Nordlund went in and out of prison for thieving. In 1900, after serving a four-year sentence, he tried changing his life. But because he had been to prison several times, he had difficulty getting a job, which led to him returning to his old life. He planned one last big hit that would solve all his problems. He was going to rob the ferry Prinz Karl. He bought a ticket, got on a boat, and with him he brought two revolvers, several knives, and padlocks. His plan was to lock the engine room and steal as much money he could from the passengers and also the ship's register. And to make sure he got away with this, 
he was going to kill as many as he could and in the end set the ferry on fire. His plan failed since he didn't count on the passengers trying to get the attention of another ferry. But even though he failed, he still killed four people and wounded nine. Out of those nine wounded, eight survived their wounds. He only got 845 Swedish crowns and succeeded to escape in a lifeboat. But three days later, the police caught him. After his arrest and during the trials, he didn't try to get a lighter sentence than the death sentence, which he knew he would get. He felt no remorse and even tried to escape from prison twice. In a letter to his family, he said that he welcomed the death sentence, since he didn't feel like a part of society anyways. December 10th, 1900, he was executed by beheading. Ture Hedin was born January 7, 1927, in Schävlinge. At 16, he was already guilty of arson, after breaking into a brewery to steal fodder for the family horses. To cover up his tracks, he put the brewery on fire. In the 1950s, he trained to become a parish constable, where he met Gunnar Johansson, who would later on investigate his case. 1951, after a poker game, Hedin killed and robbed his friend Allan Nilsson, and once again to cover up his tracks, he set the house on fire. He was also the one to investigate the murder, and therefore could easily get away with it. His ex fiance Ulla Ösberg broke up with him and reported him to the police for abusing her several times. As a consequence of this, he also lost his job as a constable. August 22nd, 1952, at midnight, Hedin killed his parents with an axe and set their house on fire. Afterwards, he went to a home for elderly in Hurva, Ulla's workplace. Hedin got in, murdered Ulla and the matron of the home. He then proceeds to douse the stairs and floors with gasoline, barricades the entrance and sets the home on fire. Four more people died in the flames, and one more died later on because of their wounds. Hedin leaves the crime scene, writes a suicide letter where he confesses to the murders, leaves it in his car for the police to find, while he drowns himself. Matthias Flink, born March 8th, 1970 in Falun. In 1993, he graduates as an officer and is employed by the Swedish Armed Forces. Spring 1994, he himself applied for treatment for his mental health. He is getting more aggressive and irritable. Both friends and family are getting worried for him. June 10th, 1994, after a night out with some friends, he meets his girlfriend, Eva. She thinks he's too drunk and tells him to go home. A security guard kicks him out and also tells him to go home. He moves on to another club where he meets his girlfriend, again. This time, a fight breaks out and the guard throws him out. Eva decides that she's going to report him, and she and her friends walk over to the police station. He goes home and changes to his uniform, walks to his regiment's base, there, he took an AK-5 and five clips, about 150 bullets. Supplied and ready, he snuck out of the base. In a park, he opens fire against a group of people. Four people died immediately, one died at the hospital and one survived. Flink keeps going and shoots another four people. In total, he fired 47 shots and all hit. After this, he climbs a building crane, sat there for about half an hour before deciding to go home. Two policemen tried to stop him, but he didn't listen and shot at them. They hid behind their vehicle. They then succeeded in stopping him by shooting back at him, hitting him in the hip. The pain woke him up from his psychosis. In court, this was argued as to why he shouldn't be in prison. 
the court in the end decided that he would get lifetime in prison. Flink appealed this several times, but was denied until 2010 when the Supreme Court gave him 36 years. This was later on lowered to 30 years. He was released June 11, 2014, 20 years after his crime. That was all I had on a few Swedish mass murderers. Next week, we'll be talking about one specific case that was brought to my attention last week. A serial killing that happened in my hometown about 45 years ago. So make sure you are subscribed and hit that bell so you don't miss it. Thank you so much for watching. Take care of each other and yourselves. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.